Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today let's talk about using polar corners to rewrite the sum of those two integrals into one iterate integral. And so the way to do it is to first just graph the region integration for each one and then see what the region looks like. So first we are going to just label the integrals. So we are going to label this first one as the uh, integral one and then the other one, the other one will be integral two. So let's just label that. And then now uh, I also need to label the scales for this this xy plane right here. So we're going to just label two boxes as one unit. So we are going to just get those here. So zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. Okay, so now we are ready. And let's look at the first integral here. And for the first integral, I usually will start by rewriting the um, the equations for the limits so that we can actually see the lines or the curves more easily. So as you can see that instead of just leaving the limits at zero and one, I'm actually writing x equals zero and x equals one so that I can see what the equation looks like. So we have y equals the square root of one minus x squared. And the other one is y equals the square root of four minus x squared. Okay, so you can see that this is really part of the circle that is part of the circle. And if you don't see it, then you can simply just square both sides. You can get y squared equals four minus x squared. So if you, if you just, um, what happens is that if you move things, then you can actually see that what x squared plus y squared is equal to four. And then same thing happens right here. We get y squared is equal to, what is that one minus x squared? And then you can see that if you move things around, we get x squared plus y squared is equal to one. So that is a circle of radius two, and that is a circle of radius one. Now, um, the problem is that we are not going to graph the whole circle here. The reason is that we are only going to graph those portion of the circles between x equals zero and x equals one, which will be between those two. And how do we graph the first one? This one is a unit circle and we only graph the arc right here in the first quadrant. So we are going to just get this. Okay, and then the other one, the other one is a circle radius two center at the origin. And so we are started the two and then we'll, we are going to hit the two, but then we only, we only want to graph the, um, the region up to, up to this portion right here. So, so just this region, this is the region of integration for one, as you can see. Now we do the same thing for the second integral here. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the limits as x equals one, x equals two, and then the integral from y equals zero to y equals, what is that square root of four minus x squared, as you can see. So as you can see here, uh, y equals zero, it's really just the, um, the x-axis. And we are going to graph it from x equals one to x equals two. So we are going to get this horizontal line right here for y equals one. I mean, y equals zero, okay? And then now what about this one? This one is the same thing as this limit. So we are getting a circle of radius two, as you can see, and the top portion of the circle, which is really just going from zero to this radical. We are going to just continue going down right here. And then of course, x goes from zero to two, right? I mean, from one to two. So we are going to go from one to two, which will give us the region two. And as you can see here, um, what, a, what kind of region are we getting if we are combining them together because they have the same integrand. So if we are combining the two regions together, okay? And this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to use the same color for, for both this time. So combining the region, we are really just getting this, this region like this. Okay. Yeah. Where the, this outer curve is really just the, uh, the arc of the circle of radius two. And then the inner curve is really just the arc of the circle, um, <clears throat> of radius one. Right. And so that is the region integration. Now, how do we write that as a uh, one iterated integral here? So how do we write that? So now we are going to start making the conversion. 
Yeah, so here is how we do it. So we are going to start with writing down the um, the inner integral. Okay, so with the parentheses right here. And then now the integrand, we got to convert the integrand first because usually the integrand is the easy one to convert. So the y, we got to convert the y. And the y is going to be written, converted into polar. So we are going to get what? R sine of theta. This one is the, this one is the y, as you can see. And then when we convert to polar, then there is the, the dA will actually give us the R and then dR, d data, as you can see. So we are going to put the R here, and then we are going to get the dR. And then so the d data is on the outside. Okay, so now um, we already have put down a lot of stuff, but then we're still missing the the limits, right? So now we need to figure out the limits for R, and then after that, we will figure out the limits for the data, okay? So now the limits for R, it's actually based on this idea right here. So what we are going to do is to, we can just think of uh, drawing some arrows like this, starting from the origin. And so what happens is that if, draw some arrows that will hit the region of integration. So we are going to, and then once you, we start hitting the region, you can see that this is the portion that we want. And then once we go outside the region, then <clears throat> we don't consider that anymore. So for chosen angle of data, this is the this is the line segment as you can see that is inside the region, right? This portion is inside the region for this um, this ray that we are drawing. So this is the portion that we want. How far is this point away from the origin is one unit. As you can see that that lies on the unit circle, right? And then what about this point? How far is that point away from the origin? That's two units away from the origin. And in fact, if you just try to draw other rays right here, that means choosing a different angle of data. What happens is that the R goes from one to two because we also take any values in between. And as you can see that we, we can actually draw another one here. So as you can see that no matter what angle that you're choosing for the data right here, then you are actually having the R going from one to two. The lower bound for the R is one, the upper bound for the, uh, for the R is two. So our limits would simply just be one to two. Okay. So that is the inner integral here. And then now for the limits for the data, then we can simply just look at the region of integration. It actually goes from starting at this positive x-axis right here. This is where this is when data is equal to zero. So we are going to start with zero. And then what about the upper bound? We go all the way to the positive y-axis right here. So what is that angle for data? That's pi over two. So now we have the iterator integral. And as you can see that if to do the calculation, this one would be easier to do than this one. But we are not going to do the calculation here. I just, in this video, I just want to show the idea for how to convert that sum into uh, polar coordinates. Okay, so that's it for this problem. Thank you for watching. Please share my video and subscribe. Thank you. I will see you next time.